Assuming you already know all about supply and demand and that the demand curve tells you the marginal benefit, today we're going to call it private marginal benefit. In other words, marginal benefit means the most somebody would be willing to pay for the first and the second and the third and the fourth, etc. unit on the demand curve. We're, we're clarifying that with the word private today, saying this is just an individual person's willingness to pay, not taking into account other people in society. And as long as you know that uh, the supply curve is the marginal cost curve, which represents the additional cost that we go through whenever we produce another unit of a good. Again, when we're talking about externalities, we append uh, the, the word private there to clarify that what we're talking about is that this is the cost to the business, just the business itself of producing the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth unit, etc. Not taking into account any other costs the society might have for producing these goods. Now, if things were just left up to the market, supply and demand, private buyers and private sellers, then what would happen in this market is we're going to arrive at this equilibrium point where at a price of $8, people will be buying five, let's say this is five million of this product. And we can go through and calculate all the things like the total revenue, five times eight dollars is forty dollars. We could do the consumer surplus, we could do the producer surplus, but instead of doing all that, let's just focus on the total surplus, which is just the consumer and the producer surplus added together. So the total surplus is going to be this green triangle here. Now, how much total surplus would there be in this market? It's just the area of this triangle, which is just one half times the base, and the base is 15 here, and the height is 5. So the area is going to be one half times 15 times 5, which tells us that the total surplus would be 37.5. And let's assume this is million dollars here, okay? 37.5 million dollars. And again, keep in mind this idea that total surplus is simply the difference between the value, the willingness to pay of people for a product, minus the cost of producing those units of the product there, right? So this area here is just the value minus the cost. That's the total surplus. Now we want the total surplus to be as large as possible because the bigger that total surplus is, what it, that implies is that we are pro somehow providing people with a high benefit, high value for a low cost. So total surplus being large is a very good thing. Now when it comes to externalities, what an externality is is we're bringing in a third party. What's a third party? Well, the buyers, that's party number one. The sellers, that's party number two. We're bringing in a third party, an innocent bystander, if you will, into the mix. And an externality is when either a cost, we call that a negative externality, or a benefit, from this transaction spills over to third parties. People who are not the ones buying or selling this product. So what's an example of this? Well, let's, let's focus on a benefit externality here. A positive externality, sometimes called a benefit externality, is when uh, some kind of product is bought and sold, and someone other than the buyer or the seller receives some benefit from that. Now, the, the best example I know of a benefit externality would be a vaccination. So, the buyer of a vaccination, right, the demanders, they benefit from getting a vaccination because they won't get sick. The suppliers of a vaccination benefit 
because they get to sell the, the vaccine and, and make some money, hopefully, from it, right? But the third parties, who are these third parties? Well, the third parties are going to be other people in society who, because the people who buy the vaccine are not going to get sick, they won't get sick, right? It's impossible to transmit a disease if you didn't get sick. So by getting vaccinated, you benefit not just yourself, you benefit those around you that you're going to come in contact with. So that's an example of a positive externality. So let's assume that in addition to the benefit, the value that these demanders get here from each vaccination, right? And let's just talk about that a little bit more. Uh, this person here buying the one millionth vaccination has a very high benefit, high value. Maybe this is a person with a, a weak immune system. Maybe it's an old person. And this person really needs to get a vaccine, and they're willing to pay a lot of money to get the vaccine. As we go down the demand curve here, we're, we're kind of listing people in order from high value to low value. But for each of these vaccines here, what we're talking about is, is how much the vaccine is worth to the person getting the vaccine. That's the private marginal benefit. But this ignores the fact that there's this external benefit that people are going to get from the vaccine. So when we talk about this total surplus, that $37.5 million, that's great that we're getting that amount of surplus, but we could actually do better. If there's something that when people buy it, there's another benefit that they're not actually taking into account. We should encourage people to do more of that. And what this analysis we're about to do does is, is help us understand, well, how much more of it should we encourage and how much additional surplus could this generate? So in order to do this, what we need to know is have some kind of idea of approximately how large this positive externality is, how, how large is this benefit that spills over to other people. So let's assume that this positive externality, that the amount of benefits that spills over to third parties who, regardless of whether they're vaccinated or not, they're getting a benefit because there's less of a chance they're going to get the disease for each of these people who actually goes and buys a vaccine. Let's assume that that externality is $3. So there's a benefit that spills over to third parties of $3 per vaccine. And again, this is in addition to the private marginal benefit, in addition to the benefit going to the person getting the vaccine, there's another $3 spilling over to the rest of society. So we'd call this the external benefit. So how do we analyze this? Well, what we want to do is figure out, okay, what would happen if we somehow got all of these demanders, somehow encouraged all these demanders, not just to think about their private marginal benefit, but also to take into account the fact that every time someone gets vaccinated, they're helping other people. So how do we do that? Well, all we need to do is explicitly add the $3 in here and to say, well, if this one millionth person who gets a vaccine, if the value to them is $16, well, then if we add in $3, we must be going up to $17, $18, $19, right? So we're just adding in the external benefit into the private marginal benefit curve here, the demand curve, in other words. And this uh, person here, the two millionth person, they get a $14 private benefit. Add in one, two, three dollars to that. And that would make the total benefit to society. In other words, the social marginal benefit, $17. And we just do likewise for every point on the demand curve. One, two, three. We add in that $3 external benefit. 
And what this is going to do is be a parallel shift and increase in the demand curve there, basically. And we call it the social marginal benefit curve. So let me finish adding in one, two, three, and then connect these points. And let me do, use a different color here so that it doesn't look exactly the same as the private marginal benefit curve. All right, so this is will be the social marginal benefit. And again, all that is is the private marginal benefit plus the externality plus that $3. So what can we do once we have done this? Well, a couple of things. The, the first thing to see is that the amount of the surplus that we thought we were getting, 37.5 million, that's actually not quite right. The proper calculation of the total surplus should be including that so total benefit, right? The benefit of not just the private, but the social marginal benefit. So it ought to take the social marginal benefit minus the marginal cost, and we should be adding up this much larger shape, which isn't a triangle now. It's, it's a triangle, but it's got this little stub over here that is cut off. Got that little stub cut off over there. So truly, we're getting a bigger total surplus just because there are these extra benefits that we didn't include anymore. And those extra benefits that we, that we sorry, we didn't include before are going to be the area of a parallelogram right here. So that would be, should be added to that existing surplus that we calculated before. But here's the problem. Here's the problem, and here's where the idea of a deadweight loss comes in, that now, once we realize the fact that there is this external benefit of $3 per vaccination, if we do not follow through and try to figure out a way to, instead of stopping here at point A, with only 5 million people getting vaccinations, what this analysis suggests is we should be getting over here to point B, where there are 6 million people getting vaccinations. You see, there's an X, there are an additional set of people here for which once we take into account the social benefit, the benefit is bigger than the cost of giving those people vaccines. So we could be getting more surplus in this little triangle here that we're not taking advantage of. Okay, so two points just to repeat these. Point number one, we actually are getting more surplus than we realized before just because there is this there is this benefit and that's good. If we want to do a proper accounting of the surplus we should include this pink parallelogram up here. But the more crucial point is if we fail to take advantage of these extra 1 million people who, who now we realize, oh, the benefit is bigger than the cost for these people, how could we encourage these people to go get a vaccination? If we fail to encourage the extra 1 million people to get that vaccination, we're losing out on some surplus. And so that blue triangle there, if we fail to encourage that extra million to get their vaccinations, that blue is a deadweight loss. So deadweight loss, again, it comes in any time we fail to take advantage of a situation where the benefits are bigger than the costs, or we can get deadweight loss from doing too much of something and continuing to do things where the costs outweigh the benefits, right? So there's two ways to get a deadweight loss. So in the case of a positive externality, if we don't encourage the extra, we're committing the sin of not doing enough of a good thing, not getting enough people vaccinated. So in this case, that deadweight loss, the area of that little blue triangle is going to be one half times the base times the height. 
And I think about the base here as being the left side. And it's going to be 1, 2, 3. And the height is simply 1. It's the distance between the 5 million and the 6 million. So 1 half times 3 times 1 is saying that we would have a 1.5 million dollar deadweight loss. In other words, one and a half million dollars worth of surplus that we could have gotten that we didn't get. Now, let's think for just a minute about how we could and how we do in various countries encourage people to get vaccinations because we realize the value of vaccinations exceeds what individuals are likely to think and, and can take consideration of, of on their own. A few ways we, we could do this, we could lower the cost of vaccinations, the government could subsidize, that is, pay for the cost of some of these, uh, some part of the cost of these vaccinations. Another method would be to have some advertising campaign, trying to convince people that, wow, vaccinations are good for you and they're good for your country, so do your patriotic duty and get vaccinated today. This is a common tactic. A third way we could encourage people to get more vaccinations is by requiring people to get vaccinated. And indeed, in many countries, we do require people, at least certain kinds of people, to get vaccines, uh, especially uh, many times in the United States. Uh, if you want to go to a public university or a public school, we'll require students get certain kinds of vaccines before they're allowed to attend classes. So. This wraps up this discussion of positive externalities and how to analyze why we should care about positive externalities and how we can analyze and measure the inefficiency if we only allow the market to determine how many vaccines people are going to get or how, many, how much of any activity with a positive externality is going to be done. So, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And otherwise, this is Berkey Academy signing off. Good luck with your studies, guys.